Hey peoples, uh, welcome to a quick tip about Cappuccino in Cinnamon 4D. Basically it's like mocap for your mouse and then I'll quickly cover the key reducer which is like, you know, cleans up your mocap. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, firstly, what is Cappuccino? Cappuccino is like a, it's a, it's mocap, you know, it's like if you get a cube, say for example, and you put it here. Um, you go character and cappuccino. I'm not, this is by the way, I'm in 11.5 right now. In R12, I have no idea where they put this button. Uh, it just seems to have disappeared. But the command's still there. If you go Shift F12 and you type in cappuccino, it'll still be there. Then you just click it and you go execute and it'll come up. I'm not sure where they put it, but yeah. Maybe someone in the help file will show you where it is. Anyway, once you have it up here, uh, say for example, let's make this cube actually, yeah, let's not animate the cube, let's animate a sphere next to it. So let's go side view, let's put this cube, this cube will be an obstacle, let's get a plane, let's take a floor, and then let's get a sphere and put it here. Whoops. Let's go, say start here. And we'll put this from the side view. Now, uh, Cappuccino way to loop is once you press start real time, when you move your mouse, uh, it will record the movement of your mouse. So like when you move the this when you move this sphere around. So let's go. I'll show you quickly. We go start real time. Now I go. I want the cube to go. I mean the circle. Doom, 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 and then it looks up, and then it jumps up, and then and then I run out of keyframes. Okay, let's undo that. Let's increase this to like 150. Okay, let's start again. And it starts recording once you start moving something. So let's go. Doing, doing, doing. And then he's like, hmm, interesting. And then it jumps again, and then it jumps away. Now, what you get is you get this exact animation. Now, it's not a great animation right now because, well, it's, you know, well, you can see it's, you know, it's kind of random. But what it does is it, it lets you use, like, if you want someone waving a hand, for example, if you have, like, uh, you know, let's make a hand. Because you know what a hand, how a hand moves. You don't have to adjust the timing yourself, like, you know. it. Uh, you know that for a hand to wave, let's turn the rotation on, let's go start real time. It'll go, wait, I'm animating the wrong thing. There you go, object mode. You know that a wave, it'll be like wave, then it'll be like big wave, and a little wave maybe. So when you play it back, you know, well, that's going a bit fast. But you can uh, modify it later, which is going to show you with a key reducer. The point, is, the point of the mocker is it lets you record uh, objects move, you know, with your mouse. So you have, so you can set the timing more easy, you know, it's, yeah, it's easier to change, to set the time because, you know, you're using it with your mouse. The only thing you'll notice is once you have this, like see right now we have a cube here. Yeah. Now the problem you'll notice is in the is you have all these keyframes. Like see on the cube you have you have a key for every frame. Like you know it's so if you want to change this it's really painful. Like if you want to say if you want to make this jump here bigger, if you go to timeline by pressing Shift F3 and you press spacebar to go into the curves. You will see that it's all, well, yeah, this, I mean, it's, if you want to make the jump higher, for example, position Y, if you want to make this jump here, or is it like this position, if you want to make it higher, well, you can move this up, but it will look ugly as hell because, well, you know, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, you know, it's just going to pop up for one frame. I mean, you can move more frames around, but it, it's not quite, you know, it doesn't work well. So what you, and also you have all these keyframes here, like if you for some reason want to change how it behaves here, you have like this, you know, it's just not very easy to control. So this is why they have this thing called a key reducer. We go we go back to the sphere, we go control A. Let's make this full screenish so we can see what's going on. H2, focus on all of them. And we go function and key reducer. And now what you do is, I like to usually pull this guy out a bit so he's a bit longer. Now these are two, this is the old one, this is the new one. So I usually use the new one. 
you basically click and drag and you'll see the splines get a lot smoother and you click more and they get more smooth and this one is really pretty intelligent like it's good for say it sets the keyframes correctly for the most part this one on the other hand um, doesn't but before we do this I want to show you something uh, there's this thing in cinema in the new cinema it's called uh, where is it I seem to have lost it where did it go? It was right here, I swear. Um, yeah, it's an FQF, right? If you unclick, you have this view snapshot create. This create snapshot is very useful. I first saw this in soft image, but it, now Cinema has it. It's great. You go create snapshot, and now when you move frames around, okay, sorry, you go create snapshot, then you go view snapshot. Yeah, it's the only slightly retarded function of this. And now when we move the frames around, we actually see where they used to be. So when you do the key reducer thing, you can now see the difference of where it was and where it, you know, really. Once you let go, it automatically applies. If you want to undo this, you press Control Z and it goes back to where it was. So then you see with this one, if you do it, it goes quite significantly off. But with this one, it does a pretty good job, you know. I could probably need some movement here, you'll see like these guys are clearly way too high. So you'll need to move them around. So you want to grab these and oops. And set them up so they're back where they were. So when he lands on the floor in the box and stuff, he's in the right place. So here clearly. He's on the box at this stage, so we move these guys up. And now if we go back to this movement here, I'm oh, sorry, something got... Well, yeah, and, you know, you get the movement. If you want to change stuff, it's a lot easier now. Like, if you know, for example, here, if you see he's not on the box, you just have to change these two keyframes, right? Just move them up until he's sitting on top of the box. There you go, he's sitting on top of the box. Similarly here, if you want, you want him to jump up higher, there you go, and you can do the jump a bit bigger. And, go. and the point is, you get you got the timing right. So when he jumps, so when he jumps around, and you know, if you don't have the timing right, you just select all of them, and you if it's like too fast, because sometimes this thing records too quickly or too slowly, depending on the complexity of your scene, you can always just select all the frames here and click this thing at the top, and you can either make them go all faster or all slower. And then, you know, it's going to jump, it's going to take this squat thingy. And then after you've got done this, you can go in and you can, you know, animate the shape manually and stuff. And Yeah, like obviously, you know, it, <laughs> it, it takes some, you know, a couple of tries, but the good thing is the tries are quick, you know. It's kind of like, uh, this Tappuccino thing is kind of like an you know, auto key on steroids, you know. It's just like, instead of just key f auto keyframing when you move it, it just auto keyframes all the time. So yeah, there it is, your quick tip, it's a, you know cappuccino and the key reducer. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, post in the comments. Yeah, cool. Have fun.